Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Celeste. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today. We're super excited to be introducing the first webinar to you, uh, the first of many. Uh, internally at Last Yard, we've just got so much knowledge being in the retail industry for almost 20 years. Um, so we wanted to take the opportunity to share some of that knowledge with you today. Um, so I'm Celeste Walker. I'm the Product Marketing Manager at Last Yard. Uh, this is Patrick. G'day, and I'm the uh, BDM here at Last Yard and help, uh, I guess, our companies and our customers um, solve their problems, their retail problems. And uh, I'm Adam, the uh, Head of Design and uh, Co-Founder of uh, Last Yard. What a team. <laughs> so we've got quite a few people joining us today from throughout Australia and Asia Pacific. So once again, thanks for joining us. Cool. So just... Pat, do you want to get, <laughs> get started? Yeah. I'm gonna flick across the. Uh, before we start, uh, we really encourage everyone to uh, submit any questions that you may have along the way. So you'll see a small question section. So please feel free to send them through as we go and we'll try to answer those as best possible. Cool. So yeah, we definitely want to make this as interactive as possible. So let's let's get started. Who is Last Yard? Well, I think we need to start with why is last chart? It may sound silly, but for what purpose do we actually exist and how have we been going for 20 years and so on? So it is to increase custom engagement, revenue through coordinated real-time promotional activities across store networks. And we've been doing that really well for the last 20 years. And we wanna share that with you today. Uh, the more complex part is that we take a lot of data from multiple sources, clean it up through our application, our system, uh, make it presentation ready and then engage shoppers through endpoints such as paper tickets, in-store screens, social media, uh, electronic shelf edges and uh, of course digital ones and uh, yes there is a difference between electronic and digital. Um, okay enough about us, um, what knowledge are we going to impart with you today? After all what is a goal of today's webinar? We're hoping that it will impart best practice to enhance your retail promotions, covering things like how to drive customer engagement, ticket designs, the best practice behind that, information hierarchies, selecting the right promotion type, promotional mediums, brand and campaign consistency. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, Adam, or ads as we yep. like to call him, uh, our head of design with his guidance. I think we can uh, learn something new today. So over to you. Thanks, Pat. Um, I think I can... Um almost add a little bit to that just with the uh, the origin story of Last Yard. So um, yeah, we were really about uh, uh, wanting to improve initially the, uh, you know, ticket design and design aspect um, at the shelf level. Um, we really wanted to, uh, you know, introduce like a graphic design level through a systemized approach. So uh, what we were seeing is uh, early on, a lot of POS systems uh, were responsible for, um, you know, ticket design, and they were creating a really basic um, type of form. And the desire was to, you know, how can we get, you know, a, a graphic design level design for every ticket without having to hand crank each ticket design. So the goal was really to combine a systemized approach that introduced um, efficiencies of a system with the ability um, of a, a graphic designer. Um, and so that was really the origin story um, coming out of basically a supermarket. Um, and over the 20 years, we've worked with small um, independents, um, enterprise level, mid-market, um, across grocery, pharmacy, liquor, um, electrical, white goods, all sorts of um, areas. So uh, yeah, this is just really about um, sharing what we've seen um, and uh, what we've learned over the last 20 years. So with... Um, with that being said, I'll just um, I'll turn the cam off so we can focus on the presentation and we'll get into it. So I guess uh, to expand on the why and the power of ticketing. Um, so the main reasons why you see um, ticketing and why retailers need to focus on ticketing is uh, really, you know, 
a basic level of just communicating price and product and calling out um, shoppers' attention to particular products that they want to see. Uh, it's to link uh, external advertising, so your catalog campaigns, your radio adverts, your TV adverts, um, online ads, linking that into the store so that you know when the shopper is in your store, uh, they're able to easily find um, the products that you are advertising. Um, obviously, to promote uh, offers and values, so uh, those uh, those um, like catalog campaigns that you're running externally, you want to make sure that you're bringing the same level of um, engagement from the catalog through to the shelf edge. Um, to assist um, store staff with um, you know product fill operations, so. Um, you know, tickets and templates do play a role in just the general operations of a, of a store and um, the amount of information and the type of information that we um, display on a ticket can help staff with those operations as well. And then overall, it's basically just to increase the basket size, um, you know, we spend a lot of um, time and money getting those shoppers into the stores and you want to try and maximise um, uh, that potential sales as much as possible. So that's really... Um, what it's all about. Yeah, after all, you've got their attention in the store, so try and grab it even further. So building on top of that, there's a couple of categories that we break down um, tickets into. Uh, there's your promotional type tickets, and this is probably what we'll focus on a little bit, or mostly today. So these are your catalog, your advertised lines, um, anything where you know, you've negotiated a, um, a discount with a supplier and you're promoting a, a you know a value add um, or a value savings and then you've got um, your, you know your value lines so if you're a if you've got categories that are like low price always every day low price um, uh, you can call these out with um, ticketing as well um, and then you've also got your maybe your non-promotional lines so maybe you just want to call attention to a product that you need to move maybe it's not moving maybe you want to um, you know, get the attention of the shopper, you know, maybe it's something new or, um, um, yeah, you just want to like promote something that's not necessarily a savings or, you know, it's maybe a locally sourced or, um, you know, it's got uh, healthy food, like some sort of gluten-free or something like that. And you just want to try and promote that and, you know, um, try and move that, uh, that stock as well. So, what we see is um, commonly in retail, the um, common approach has been to call out and communicate product price and link the external advertising. Um, and what that generally creates in terms of how you approach design is that uh, the retailer typically says, well, we need a special, a clearance and an everyday low price sort of header or style, style ticket. And then they sort of ask, well, will you also need it in like an A4 or an A5 ticket? Um, and then what you get with that is sort of like a theme first type approach. So the focus is really on the, you know, those wordings of special everyday low price um, clearance. And so what you get in terms of a, like a structure is a theme consideration. And when I say theme, it's really like the, you know, the artwork that you might apply to the ticket. So it's really just, sorry, ads. Just to interrupt quickly there. By theme, what do you mean exactly? Yeah, so theme is like um, uh, like a special would be a theme. Your your catalog promotion is a theme. Um, if you're running a uh, yeah, so like a special a clearance, it's really the um, the message or the message that you're trying to communicate um, on the ticket. So that's how we sort of classify as a theme. Okay, um, so almost a campaign, would you say, in a sense? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, campaign's a, a good word for it, yeah. So um, most retailers would run some sort of monthly campaign with a catalogue special, um, and, yeah, that's that's really your theme. So uh, a good example is, like, Christmas. Christmas is a theme. Mother's Day is a theme. Um, and then outside of those seasonal campaigns, you've got, um, yeah, your regular sort of um, catalogue campaigns. So that's how we classify um, themes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so in terms of the structure, you've got your theme consideration first, then you've got your sizes, and then you've got your offer information. So what sort of product information are you, you displaying on that ticket? Um, and then how 
this theme first um, thinking influences design is typically you would come up with the shell or the artwork um, and a lot of prominence is given to um, you know the wording or the artwork that you want to display so special clearance everyday low price and then you think about the sizes and how that artwork would look on those sizes. With your first point there, yep. any tips or advice you could provide over perhaps which you would roll out with if it would make more sense to uh, have the theme being more clearance related as opposed to special, uh, if there's any any tips you may have there? I guess um, what we'll, we'll get into that um, uh, down the line, but yeah, uh, I guess the wording you use can have a lot of like psychological impact on on the shopper. Um, generally, your 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 special is sort of relating to um, maybe a price reduction, a temporary price reduction, like a you know you um, you know a was now sort of structure. Um, a clearance might be um, maybe more of a significant savings, um, or that um, you know that that product's no longer going to be stocked. Um, but in terms of uh, what you would use, um, uh, yeah, we sort of uh, will explore how we sort of ex how we sort of um, look at changing that up really, and not focusing too much on the wording. Yeah. So in addition to that, the very last thing is typically the um, the product information that you would want to display. So um, yeah, you would then slot in um, what you can onto those um, those sort of shelves. Uh, so why is uh, theme first design um, used? It's basically um, almost the way it's always been done. Um, so the process hasn't really changed. Um, Typically, a lot of money is just spent up front on your catalogue, your advertising, um, the TV, radio, that sort of stuff. And then the uh, in-store ticketing is almost like the um, ugly stepchild <laughs> of, of retail. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's actually something not a lot of um, staff enjoy doing, head office staff, um, uh, store staff. It's seen as quite cumbersome and annoying, really. Um, and that can be a result of maybe the systems having not previously been geared for that. Um, so it's seen as a, a low value proposition. So not a lot of investment typically goes into improving this area of the business. Um, it's just a really interesting point. I think that there's a lot of emphasis placed on actually driving the traffic to the store, but then it's that final um, point of decision and point of purchase to really secure that sale and increase basket size that's often the last thought, right? You yeah. might even say or it's the, the last year. The last yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so why theme first? Um, so as we said, uh, you know, it's been maybe the POS system is responsible for, you know, um, creating the ticket and what that's really doing is just, it's really a basic form of information. Um, maybe the hardware at the store is not good enough and the software, there's no um, software that really allows head office to control what's happening at the store level and no bit of software that allows the stores to execute what the head office want to achieve. Uh, so to combat that, um, really the businesses tend to look at just uh, what's the best way that we can control branding and control quality and maybe that might be to just um, create pre-printed stock um, and then have uh, whatever system um, basically do its best to just fill in uh, the information. But the focus has really been on, well, how does that artwork look? Um, well, on the printed side there, Ads, what, uh, how, what kind of problems do you think that causes having pre-printed stock and then trying to print information on it? That's... Um, there's a lot of logistical um, work that goes into having to create pre-printed stock. And then so... Uh, retailers combat that a couple of ways. Sometimes everything will be um, like in the terms of a catalog campaign, everything will be centrally produced and then shipped to the stores. Um, so all the pricing, all the product information is already set um, 
there's a huge time um, cost involved with that, not only with just um, you know actually delivery, um, getting the uh, the packs to the stores at the at the right time. Um, there tends to be a large amount of waste um, that occurs because it needs to be a one size fits all approach. So you have to produce absolutely every um, product and size combination, and then it gets to the stores, and the stores typically just use only what they need, and the rest gets thrown out. Um, in terms of if you just send down the data and then rely on the store to um, print um, on the shell, um, that's okay, but uh, you tend to find that stores will then go outside of that to produce the things that they want to do. Um, so typically what we see is about 50% of ticketing um, done at the store has been promotional ticketing, so your catalogue ticketing, and then the other 50% is basically what the store needs to do. So like manager specials, um, non-promotional lines, uh, just reprints, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, there's uh, a bit of um, uh, disconnect between um, between the ticketing of what the head office and you know a promotion needs versus what a store might need. Um, so examples that we see of um, theme first design is um, you know this this sort of approach, uh, which is. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. It's basically what this is doing is it's, it's calling out, you know, your um, your advertised lines. Um, but what you see is a large amount of real estate given to uh, the artwork. So the wording sale, special, catalog special, um, these are really the heroes. So what these tickets are good at doing is helping the shopper identify that this is on special. And then you're relying on the shopper to either convince themselves that they need um, that product or you're just reminding them, hey, this thing that you normally buy is on special now, so why don't you grab this? Um, which is, you know, the um, it's the, the base purpose for why you would do ticket ticketing, which is great. Um, what we're really talking about is, is there a better way or is, is there a way that we can maximise this even further? Take um, create more opportunity to maybe sell the shopper on something that they didn't plan on, <laughs> plan on buying, you know, like maybe that uh, Snickers or Mars bar as they're walking through the confectionery aisle. Oh, absolute sucker for that one. <laughs> um, any further comments here adds just in relation to the theme first approach not being optimal or anything here just regarding that ticket design that perhaps doesn't work? Um, yeah, so I think what what we're seeing more and more um, of these days is more information needs to be um, placed onto the um, ticket. And we're actually seeing that the ticket sizes that are being used is uh, reducing quite a bit. So um, where maybe several years ago, or supermarket, for example, a ticket size might have been like a, a nine up, which is like a an A7 or an A8 type size. Um, you're now getting down into like a 12 up or a 16 up. Um, and that's because there's much more product generally on the shelves or the product is smaller and you need more, you need more tickets to accommodate that. So um, the issue with the theme first approach is how much real estate it's using. Um, and it's really uh, the amount of um, uh, weighting that is needed for um, data these days is much higher. So that's really um, what we're seeing in terms of issues with the theme first approach. Is that just competition for real estate? And we sort of ask, well, how much, you know, what exactly is that catalog special wording actually doing for you? Um, is, there a, is there a different way we can approach this? Yeah. So just to cover off what you would typically see in a in a store, um, you know, so when you're doing your advertised lines, you know, this is this is what you would see, which is great for calling out the products, as as we've said. Um, when you get into a, a a higher level of ticket intensity, um, there's a question about whether you start to numb 
the retailer, um, um, the shopper to uh, the offers that are being presented to them, particularly if the design is consistent across the board. So every special looks the same um, and the weighting of all the um, you know offer value is the same. Is the shopper just seeing that, oh, this thing's on special, cool, but I'm not really paying attention to why it's on special. It's just, uh, I normally buy this thing, so it's on special, so I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Um, at, at what point here would you say that there's promotional ticket fatigue? Um, certainly when the uh, when it seems like the, the special ticket becomes the norm, um, you're sort of moving more into a scenario where what you're conveying is, uh, if we go to the next slide, you're almost conveying a, a sense that, well, we just have low price or great value always. So what you tend to be doing is just establishing a, like a trust relationship with the shopper. So you're more of a, um, almost a, a value proposition. Yeah. Um, so the shoppers um, gaining a level of trust that, you know, whenever I come to this store, it's, I'm going to have a, um, a great value yeah. um, presented to me, which is um, perfect. Uh, but do you then get into a sense of, well, if that is the norm, at what point is the shopper uh, no longer paying attention to the ticket and you're almost doing this sort of thing again, where it's just back to a basic label um, type approach. Um, yeah, for sure. I think it's interesting as well with that approach that it can reflect the brand or the value perception, as you said. Yeah, um, and there are a lot of um, brands that have that value proposition. Um, so what we we sort of look at is, well, you're getting the shopper in at a value proposition, which is great. Uh, you don't necessarily, you might not necessarily be needing to ticket to that value proposition, but there might be other things that you can ticket in terms of call outs. You know, you might be able to promote um, uh, healthy choices or um, locally sourced, locally produced, that sort of thing. There might be a different level of ticketing that you can do at that point to convince a shopper to, you know, try something new or buy something extra. Um, yeah, so what is the impact of this? Um, so I think in these two examples, what we can see is uh, when there's a focus on your thing or your artwork first and not necessarily the weighting of what you're showing, uh, you can get missed call out opportunities. Um, so if we take the example on the left here, uh, we're advertising a super savings and our save amount is almost $10, but the savings is almost the smallest thing on this ticket. So is it really a super savings? You know what, you're really relying on the shopper to actually read every ticket. And as we were talking about before, if everything's looking similar, are they really gonna be paying that attention to it? Um, same with the opportunity of, with the um, ticket on the right hand side, we've got a savings of $25, which is just about half price for that product. And it's sort of getting lost in that um, mix of information there. Uh, so what we, what we want to look at doing is, well, is there just a, a better weighting that we can apply to this sort of information to call it out differently? Um, and this is where we're talking about call out prominence. So we've got um, two styles here or two forms, templates, which are exactly the same. And you know, the save goes into the same space all the time, um, regardless of what the value being presented is. So the ticket on the left is a savings of 10 cents but the ticket on the right is a savings of $3. And in um, context of the actual product, it's a half price offer. So a half price is a huge um, call out for a shopper, um, but it's not getting that prominence on the, on the ticket. So it's not necessarily effectively selling the shopper on making a, an action. It's almost disappointing coming up and seeing only 10%, 10 cents off. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, happens quite a bit. This, yeah. you know, you'll see it on social media, you know, a savings of one cent or something like that, um, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's you, how, how you balance these things out can, can really weigh into um, the shopper's experience. Um, here's an example of where uh, the ticket is really just calling out the um, campaign. Um, 
So the ticket on the left is a, a stock take sale, you know, uh, 50, up to 50% off um, store-wide. It's a mattress, so it's quite a high-priced, high-value product. Um, but it's not doing any of the savings or math for the shopper. So you're still asking the shopper to spend almost over $2,000 um, and you're not necessarily calling out that maybe you're saving 500, you're saving a thousand, you're saving 2000, you know, what's the, what's the immediate call to action for the shopper? Um, because $2,000 is still a lot to swallow for them. Um, so you're only going to really convince them to buy something now if they absolutely need a mattress. Um, and that's why they've entered the store because they've seen the campaign um, online um, and they've already convinced themselves that they need to, to purchase something, you're not really influencing them if they're sort of on the fence about buying something. Like they need a mattress, but maybe they can wait. You want to convince them to, to yeah. buy that. And even seeing uh, 2,249 there, if I had a budget of 2,000, but saw that the product was 50% down from a very expensive product, thinking that if I spend an extra $250, I'll get something better. then that's a much better, I don't know, much better um, reason for me to spend more money. Yeah, in terms of um, psycho psychology on the, on the ticket, uh, whenever you can um, sort of promote that the shopper is getting something as opposed to maybe saving something that has a, um, uh, a different sort of um, influence over them as well. Because, uh, you know, you see this a little bit with, um, you know, buy two, get one free. Um, the idea that the, you know, you're walking away with something extra is a little more appealing than just saving maybe mm. um, $10 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and the same with the, um, just that example on the right hand side, um, we're showing the was price and the now price, um, but there's an opportunity to show, you know, we're saving almost $200 on that product. Um, this one is an example of when uh, marketing and des design doesn't lead the ticketing agenda or the uh, ticketing agenda sort of gets um, co-opted by other parts of the business. Um, so we have an example here of uh, where there's probably too much information trying to compete um, for dominance on, on the ticket. So the theme, which is a category theme, lifestyle image is taking up a huge chunk of the, um, the ticket space. And then basically a blurb of the product um, and then some financing information. So there's no real call to action here um, for the shopper. Um, it's really, you're asking them to, to spend $788 and you're sort of relying on them having made that choice um, over every other product that it's competing against. It uh, seems to be quite common for retail marketers to be juggling with a lot of information uh, what's your suggestion here in terms of information hierarchy and deciding which to include and which perhaps isn't so relevant? Yeah, I think uh, we'll see this uh, a little later down the line, but for this particular um, product, you know, a television or any sort of electrical product or appliance, um, product specs are a key driver for um, helping a shopper make a decision. Um, and you don't really see that here um, other than the blurb, which is sort of easy to dismiss, uh, that's not easily identified here. So basically what's happening is uh, the shoppers are either having to do the research themselves on the web, which we know is a common thing these days. Um, but yeah, in terms of while they're shopping on the floor, uh, the uh, priority message here, which should be around the um, spec information is not present. Um, so how can we improve this? Um, so we remember the goals of um, promote offer values and increase basket size. Um, and we want to um, make sure that we're creating a call to action. So the previously the, the two goals were basically to communicate and call out um, and to uh, link um, external advertising through to the store, um, but they weren't necessarily heavily promoting the offer of value um, with an aim to increase that basket size. So how do we do that? We at Last Yard um, try to look at the value and purpose um, driven design. So 
how we do this is what is the actual offer and the value that needs to be advertised? So is it a savings? Is it a percentage off? Is it a multi-buy? Um, how then does the theme lay into this um, rather than how does the theme dictate the, the layout of the ticket? Um, then what is the sizing that we need to work with? And how can we generate a consistent style across the suite of tickets? So with that, you then get an approach of value, purpose, and data first, then theme, then size, and then you're styling to bring it all together. So what would that look like? Um, basically, we've got uh, a design here where we have full control over the design. So this one is doing a basically a full color um, print install. Um, but whereas before you would have seen a catalog special or a special, now we've put the emphasis on the actual value and we're using color to communicate that it's a special. So shoppers are pretty used to seeing yellows and reds for specials and we're relying on that to um, reinforce that. So we can drop the um, a lot of the artwork or maybe the, um, the wording of special, catalog special to give some, um, placement to you know more than 40 percent off or save two dollars um, in this case we've got both call outs now so we're, we're telling the shopper hey this is 40 more than 40 percent off and it's savings of two dollars so um, we're really doing as much as we can to help convince the shopper that you know this is something that they should purchase um, this is just another example of how you can lay that out um, again, the weighting is on the um, value savings, so the percentage off and the savings. And then the color comes into it as a style um, and the uh, product data um, then, so your product information and your price is still fairly prominent and easy to read, um, but you're not losing a lot of real estate to the, um, to the wording catalog special special. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't have the word special there. So what we can do is if say, for example, your um, percentage off is less than 20%, then you might, at that point, you might just refer back to the word special. So you can put in thresholds, you can consider thresholds for, you know, what's gonna be an attractive value proposition. So if something's 20% off or more, then display that rather than the word special because that's going to have more emphasis on influencing a shopper's decision. Sorry, on that, um, I just noticed the Made in Australia. Obviously, that's a logo that's designed by the, the industry uh, controller. Yep. How, how do you think, what's the best way to incorporate that design to make sure that you still have all the real estate and um, able to show the shopper the, the value? Yeah, so the Made in Australia or the um, country of origin um, really has to be considered quite highly when it needs to be shown because it's a, in, particularly in Australia, it's a legislative requirement. Mm. So uh, I believe the, um, the condition is that it must be readable. Um, so it needs to be big enough that it um, can't create any confusion or, you know, the shopper can see it clearly. So you have to, at this point, it's another instance of, um, elements competing for real estate. So uh, when we had to implement this, um, a lot of the time it was the price that had to shrink a little bit to give way to the um, to the legislative mark. So yeah, it's just another thing to weigh up because it's a, a legislative requirement. It has to be weighted quite highly and your other elements are going to have to shrink to accommodate that. Mm. Um, here are some further examples of how the different offer types can then be considered. Uh, so you see a lot of different multi-buy options here. Um, and basically the multi-buy is, you know, your hero um, offer here. So it's getting the dominant um, uh, the dominant percentage of the, the ticket. Uh, and what you might have previously seen is if you see those two examples below where it says the multi-buy as the header, this is typically what you would see in a um, in that theme first approach where you've got uh, maybe a pre-printed stock or something like that. So you've got your header and then your multi-buy information has to fill the rest of the white space. 
So you can see when we change that around and make the offer the actual hero, it becomes much more prominent on the um, on the ticket. Um, and you can also see that each ticket is different. Um, so it's much harder for the shopper to disregard the tickets that they're seeing because the activity is slightly different on each ticket. It gives them a bit of pause to actually read what's happening and maybe consider each offer. So what you're doing here is you're actually allowing your dwell time for the shopper to increase a little bit. Um, and any time you can inc increase dwell time time in the store is is a good a good outcome. Just on this one, ads. How are you advising which offer should be rolled out, and how does that vary from industry to industry? Yeah, I guess uh, um, the offer will generally come from the retailer and the um, the buying department's um, deal negotiated with suppliers. So uh, what we're really doing is talking about you know, if you have, you know, consider the offers that are available and how do you weight them? So if a, uh, a multi-buy is an offer that's been negotiated or it's something that the retailer wants to promote, then that should be the hero and not necessarily the, um, maybe the afterthought to the thing. Um, so that's how we, we sort of weigh it up is what are the offers that um, you want to promote um, and how can you display this um, for your style of ticketing? Uh, here's some more examples of how um, the value of strength can influence the design. So in the same vein as you saw before, this is basically a hierarchy of how um, value might change the design. So if we start in the top left, this might be your basic um, style. So you're showing a savings of 20% of 20 cents, um, but your wording special um, fills the, the bottom area. If you need to display maybe a different type of attribute or a different type of value add, you can see in the next example where we've got a buy me um, taking the place of the original save, but the save still is present. It just moves down and takes the um, space of the special. So this is where prioritization and um, weighting starts to influence the design. In the next, in the next case, you've got more than 40% off. So this is a really high value proposition. And so you give this even more weighting. You see it takes up half the ticket size um, because this is a really strong call out. Same with the less than half price. This is a really strong call out proposition. So give it extra weighting. Um, same with the, the multi-buys. These are strong value propositions um, and you want to give these the, um, the correct weighting as well. Um, that does not mean that um, theme never takes priority. Um, so we can see here, um, particularly, uh, you know, during COVID, there was um, a huge emphasis on needing to, you know, reduce buying limits for toilet paper and stuff like that. And uh, there was also a, a strong desire to promote locally sourced goods and um, locally produced goods. So here's an example of where a special ticket might change um, to a uh, different um, message. Um, what we're seeing here is the 30% off is substituted out for the purchase limit of one per customer. But because from the get-go, we decided that um, a savings should always be prominent on the ticket, we're not sacrificing the savings amount at all. So the save amount is still there prominently on the ticket um, because we've always we've made space for basically two value messages. So um, yeah, because the um, because the offer was considered up front, we were able to substitute in and out different types of messages without sacrificing too much. Um, these are good examples of where you don't necessarily need to be, you know, in a full color sort of scenario to promote good value. Um, the instance on the left here is a savings of um, 60%. And the savings is always given the uh, largest uh, priority on the ticket. And then the way the uh, instance on the right is different is with the actual messaging. So this final clearance is more urgent than the savings of 60% because uh, this is a rarer occurrence of promotion. So this might happen fairly infrequently throughout the year for a particular product. And that's why this would have a higher call to action than the savings of 
which might be your general catalog um, sale. Um, and you can see that this is done with um, just a mono overprint on a, on a coloured stock paper. Um, but how you weight your offering is how it's influenced the design and the call out value. Um, here is an example of how um, the previous ticket we saw for the, um, the television product was reworked once um, uh, marketing and, and a graphic design approach um, was applied to it and a style guide was basically um, applied and correct weightings were given to the various pieces of information. So as we spoke about previously, the um, product spec was basically missing from the initial design and it's now a, a dominant um, consideration in the current designs and the uh, color is um, heavily used to call out um, you know the different theme types or clearance versus a maybe a um, catalog promotion um, again reds and yellows and the weighting on the actual word is not as heavy um, as you would typically see and that seems to make a lot of sense, especially when you have the product on the shelf and you can probably pick it up and look at it. But one thing that you can't really read off the box because it might not be there is the specs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in this, yeah, in this particular case with a high value item, the, um, you know, it's still a big consideration to spend a thousand dollars. So what's really going to help drive um, that sale is the, um, the spec information and whether it is on sale now or not. Uh, here's another example of how you can improve on the previous um, uh, value weightings. So as we spoke about before, we had two examples of save 10 cents and save $3, which were given equal prominence on the design. Um, and through acknowledging that design, um, or that weighting, you can call it out differently. So in this case, uh, the shop is not necessarily just glancing over something that looks exactly the same. They're able to actually consider, oh, hey, this um, this one's actually half price. So um, I can consider that a little bit more deeply than, than what I used to. And it's obviously a lot more prominent. It's a bigger call out, more value. Yeah, again, it's all about getting that shopper's attention. And, um, uh, with these sort of varied designs, if the design is um, changing just enough, what it's doing is it's creating a, a level of action or activity in the store um, that the shopper can't necessarily just dismiss. Um, that's it, I guess, to, to summarise. Um, yeah, what we're really talking about is uh, a little bit of a, a paradigm shift from what used to occur or what still does occur in a lot of um, uh, retailers, their, their way of thinking of, of the, the ticket design from just needing to call out the, um, the product that's being advertised and maybe considering um, how the, the data and the, um, the value proposition should take priority um, when, when designing a, a ticket and how do you flip that around um, and how can that look? So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Ads. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ads. A lot of information there for everyone to absorb. Um, we're now just moving into the live Q&A session. So if you do have any further questions you would like Ads to answer, uh, please send them through to the, the question section. Patrick, do you have any questions to, to start off the q and I was just thinking, how do you decide what's better? Like half price, 50% off, you know, 20 cents. What's the cutoff? What's the moment when you go, you know what, at this point in time, what's what have you seen in the past that usually dictates that? Um, a lot of that can just come down to the designer's preference. Oh, really? <laughs> um, so what, what looks better, you know, font style and your styling is still hugely influential. So what would actually look better? Um, you know, half price, the way it looks is, you know, quite nice. Mm. Um, it's, you know, half price is if, if you've got like a 20% off, a 40% off, 30% uh, off, and then you've got a 50% off, that again, as we were speaking about, is quite similar. 
So a half, if you were to show actual half price, it's again, that is different to the percentage off. So uh, I would almost lean where possible and if possible to using the half price sort of styling because that stands out different to the other percentage offs. Yeah, right. Any tips for those retailers who may be considering a rebrand or a new campaign that they're introducing? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, really consider what you're capable of in terms of, um, you know, do you need to stick to a mono, mono print? Um, do you have the ability to um, do full colour? And the full colour doesn't necessarily need to be what you've seen in this presentation where, you know, everything's red and yellow. Um, you might, the only colour you might be doing is like the strip at the top. That would typically be your special. And um, by doing that, what you can do is you can you can utilise the options that we've shown you where if necessary, you show the word special, but if possible, you can substitute out the value savings. Um, that's really what a full colour option is, is doing for you. It's just giving you more design flexibility and execution. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a full um, a full page of colour, just, it's just about agility and dynamics. Um, it also, when you're, um, when you're uh, in a sort of pre-printed stock um, situation, uh, a lot of retailers will buy enough stock for maybe two years uh -huh. um, because maybe even more because they want to drive the cost of that stock down as much as possible. Um, it's the old, you know, um, retailing, um, you know, buy as much as possible as, as little as possible. So, um, yeah, the, you're sort of locked into a strategy at that point. It's not you, flexible at all. Yeah, it's not, not flexible. So if you want to do some sort of snap promotion, um, you have to execute on, on what you've got. Right. So it's really about um, dynamics and agility. Uh, and how should you be thinking about assets from catalogue content to in-store ticketing to create a great in-store experience? Just a question here from one of our attendees. Yeah, I'd um, look at, um, so what assets are we necessarily talking about? Um, so you can see in the previous, um, you know, the examples at the front, uh, generally a lot of assets that are used are just the wording and maybe the, the colors matching the, the, the catalog. Um, assets that we've explored using, a lot of the times in the catalog, you might see assets such as um, uh, maybe call outs for like, um, maybe a redemption or um, some sort of product specific um, attribute. Um, so in the example where, in one of the examples where we substituted an attribute for the savings and the savings dropped down to the, um, to the bottom, uh, that could be an example of a catalog um, um, asset that is used on the ticket. Um, so I'd probably have to look at what and understand what sort of um, assets are used in the catalog and how they would maybe best be utilized on the, on the ticket. Yeah, fantastic. Um, retailers are often super time poor. Any tips around uh, ticketing design best practice when you are working with those time limitations and tight deadlines? Um, yeah, I guess uh, Last Yard's all about uh, that optimization. So it's really about spending that time upfront to get the optimized approach um, over the long run. So uh, there's this concept of like ticket or poster design versus template design. So uh, what we do is really uh, a template design, which is how do we get these thousand products all displaying, you know, in the best way possible through, you know, one sort of template or a handful of templates. Um, so it's really about, you know, uh, spending that time up front to consider this, you know, consider your approach. Um, how do you want it all to lay out? How do you want it to look? How do you want it to work um, for that payoff down the road, for that payoff day to day? Because um, what we see is without sort of, without that approach and really this was the genesis of, of Last Yard is, 
uh, when you don't have that optimization, you're doing the same thing over and over. You're, you're, you're spinning your wheels on creating tickets month in, month out um, because you don't have a systemized approach. So I would say investigate uh, what you can do upfront, spend that little bit of investment to get your systems right, and then you'll get your optimization down the line. Uh, another question that we've just received, uh, what's the latest trend you've noticed retailers using with their ticket designs? Um, we're actually, I guess the good thing is we're actually are seeing um, some of the stuff that we've spoken about today. So um, less prominence is given to, um, you know, the artwork of catalog special, et cetera. And we are seeing more retailers um, substituting that out for things like dollar off, percentage off amount. So it is slowly changing. Um, uh, I guess um, that's the thing that I've noticed most. Um, and also the, the retail space of the ticket is actually reducing, as we mentioned, the um, uh, where something, where a ticket used to be quite large or larger previously, there's more of a need for it to shrink down um, but still present even more information. Uh, so that's where you're seeing the trend of, well, uh, maybe we need to rethink um, what wording we display on a ticket and how we use this artwork. Um, how, can we, how can we achieve everything we need to in terms of value proposition um, with the, the limited space? In your opinion, who has the best tickets in retail and why? Controversial. <laughs> I don't think I can answer that. Uh, <laughs> given, uh, given that we have a number of clients, um, so I think I need to sit on the fence with that. Yeah, fair. <laughs> I would, um, in terms of design, um, I think back to the, the previous question, uh, design is getting a lot cleaner as well. So that reduction in the header space or the, the necessarily, you know, the theme first approach is actually allowing for a cleaner design. So you see that with the, the um, Harvey Norman style ticket. Um, you see it also with um, any time, yeah, you can weight your information over your theme. It allows you to lay things out in a clean manner and weight it differently. And when you, when you really understand the weighting that allows you to balance your ticket out. So that's sort of the trend that we're starting to see is, you know, um, uh, more mature retailers um, are, are starting to explore that. Um, and that's sort of the trend that we see is that clean, cleaner approach, more um, information and value led. Wonderful. So it looks as though that wraps up our questions. If anyone does have any further questions, please feel free to email us uh, any comments, questions, feedback you may have. I uh, just wanted to thank you all so much for joining us and obviously ads for sharing all of his words of wisdom. Yeah, thank you. Um, and Patrick, of course, my wonderful co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as we said at the start, there will be a series of these webinars. So please stay tuned for the next one. The next topic that we will be covering is digital innovation within retail. So uh, we will have an email going out shortly with further information around that. That should be really exciting, especially in Australia where there's very little digital innovation and in retail. So. Yeah, I think it's picking up a little bit now, the interest in it. Um, Prices have come yeah. down. So, yeah, no, excited for that. Yeah, Thanks, Celeste. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have a wonderful day. See you later.